Simple, timeless and clean, the Mini Moog has been a staple in electronic music since it was released in 1986, and up until now it's gained sort of a cult status. Because of the easy to use interface and layout, the only border to entry is price. If you are here, chances are you're looking for a great, free software version of this legendary synth, and I have just the thing for you. It's called Nanu. Hi, I'm your host Forrester, and you're watching VST Adventures. VST Adventures. This video is going to be a long one. If you want the full journey, grab a cup of coffee and settle down. Otherwise, you can use the time codes that I will put over here um, to navigate around the video. Part 1. History. When Bob Moog sold the first commercial synthesizer in 1964, I doubt he foresaw what an impact he had made on the musical landscape. This strange new instrument, built facing eastward into the rising dawn of electronic music, opened up a landscape before it of new possibilities, a world of sound and texture. From gritty sandy saw waves to a fertile oasis of triangles, the Moog synthesizer brought electronic sound design to the fingertips of musicians and producers, seeking something different and boundary breaking. Although sound synthesis was not a brand new technology, other synth systems available at the time were unattainable to most people, held behind six figure price walls and overly complex design. The Moog modular system was more compact, cheaper and featured a piano keyboard. Because of these perks, the modular Moog systems garnered widespread appeal during the 60s. Despite all this however, the consumer base for such a product was just not quite there and sales began to fall around 1971. Around then, a few prototypes were made of a smaller, more portable synth, but it was initially put on hold, as Bob didn't see a market for it. Thankfully for us, however, they pursued the idea while he was away on business and created the legendary Model D. It was from this forbidden project that the clean, simple and classic Mini Moog was born. Needless to say, Bob eventually saw the potential of the synth and the company began sales. The Mini Moog was a great success, and it was one of the reasons the Moog company is still alive today. I think one of the great attractions of the Mini Moog in particular was its clean and functional layout. It was easy to understand and easy to grasp. The knobs below your fingers provided instant feedback, and there really is nothing but potential beneath the switches. I have never had the chance to play or even view a Moog in person, seeing that I live in a remote part of South Africa, with elephants and lions for neighbours. This has motivated me, out of necessity, to spend a large amount of my time with VSTs and DAWs trying desperately to find an authentic analog sound. It was this search that led me to today's plugin, Nanoog, or perhaps Nanoog, by Moo Station, a totally free soft synth with a great sound and more features than meets the eye. At the bottom of Nanoog's webpage is a note from the maker, which I've used Google Translate to read. In the summer of 2005, Nanoog was created with condolences when Dr. Robert Moog, the creator of the Moog synthesizer and pioneer of the legendary analog synthesizer, the Mini Moog, died. I decided to use SynthEdit to create a nano size synthesizer that has the characteristics of a Mini Moog synthesizer, but that was smaller and easier to use. Although the functionality is very limited, it has become a synthesizer that can be manipulated with a few parameters to create a wide variety of sounds. It's been more than a decade now, but after knowing that SynthEdit 64-bit support is stable and we can create audio units plugins for Mac OS, we decided to create another version of the plugin. Today, Moog synthesizers are bringing new products with new designs and advanced features to the world, and although the plugin is incomparable to the real thing, please feel free to enjoy the atmosphere of that wonderful synthesizer. So let's jump in and see how to make some great sounds. Part 2 Overview Nanoog has a pretty clean and functional layout with 8 sections in total. First, there is a control panel which affects the global pitch parameters like glide, speed and modulation levels. Next up we have the most complicated panel, the oscillator bank, which has 6 knobs that affect the sound generation, as well as a switch for pink or white noise. There's a filter panel which does a great job of emulating the classic Moog type filters, which is above the loudness contour panel. This is the volume and filter envelope. 
Next to that we have the output panel, which is just an output volume and a mono stereo switch. Finally we have the keyboard, which also sports a pitch and mod wheel, which is one of my only real issues with Nanoog. It's ultra sensitive for some reason and this is how it sounds. But Forrester, I hear you say. You said eight panels, I only see seven. Fear not, for there is a secret panel hidden under the Nanook sticker which lets you customize and add a few simple effects, like delay and chorus. It sounds simple, but this adds a really, really large amount of difference to the sounds and uh, is actually super powerful. Now that we have a basic overview of the layout, let's get into more detail and make some sounds. Part three, tutorial. Okay, so we're in Ableton. I am now going to hop into the uh, GUI of the program and uh, we can get crafting on our sounds. First of all, let's go over the oscillator bank. So this is the default patch for Nanoog right now. Um, there are a bunch of patches that come with um, the VST, but for some reason it doesn't work in Ableton, at least for me. Hey, this is editing Aiden here and I just looked on the website and it looks like it's been patched, so that's great. Um, you can download the newest version and it should work inside of Ableton if you install it correctly. So you can now check through all the presets and uh, experiment to find some cool sounds. It's a great way to learn, actually. Let's try and take off as many of these effects as we can and then we can get going. Okay, so we now have a, uh, a clean sine wave with uh, nothing else on it. Um, it sounds like this. Uh... So that's already quite a nice mellow sound actually, but that is the empty Nanook sign patch. So let's start with the oscillator bank and start uh, crafting our sound. So I think we're going to make a lead sound for the purposes of this tutorial. And I'm gonna try and use every single different uh, parameter or at least demonstrate every parameter. So starting with the oscillator panel, um, yeah, we can go to the waveform and obviously this just uh, changes the waveform. So we get uh, four different waveforms in Nanook. There's the sine wave, the uh, saw wave, triangle wave, and square wave. Next to the waveform, there's a little knob for pulse width, which only applies to the square. I think for our sound, I want a saw wave. So there's that. Um, uh, next we have the range knob and what this does is just it just sets the octave So we can go pretty low. Okay, so it's 10 I think because it's five up and five down So it can go really high or really low. So I'm gonna go with just the middle normal range So after the range knob we have our mixer and frequency now Nanook is a dual oscillator synth which means that there are two waveforms um, that are coming out of the oscillator bank so that means that instead of there actually being one saw wave when I press that there's actually two. You can't really change much about the second one because it is kind of tied to the first, but you can offset the two pitches to make a thick bass sort of sound or just a more rich saw wave or something like that. So the frequency knob controls the frequency of the main oscillator and the mixer knob is basically a slider between um, the first oscillator and the second oscillator. The frequency is turned all the way down. So the first oscillator and the second oscillator are at exactly the same pitch. If I turn my frequency up, it uh, makes the first oscillator, which is our main oscillator, uh, go up. So right now the mix is all the way over to oscillator one. So the frequency knob will just change the pitch straight up. So uh, that's, that's all good. But uh, if we turn the mixer up now, now it mixes in both oscillators. So right now the frequency is the same. So both oscillators are tuned to each other. But if I change the frequency of oscillator one, oscillator two will stay the same and this creates a detuned sound. So. So the frequency, um, the frequency knob is two octaves. So I'm just gonna detune it just a tiny bit to get a bit of a thicker sound. So. It creates a bit of a phase, um, which is fine. So yeah, that is basically how the dual oscillator works on this. So you can't do much on the second oscillator, but you can change the frequency of the first one, which you can make some nice detune effects. And the mixer just slides between the two. I'm gonna go with a little bit more oscillator two than oscillator one, because that's the one that's in tune, so. So it's already sounding a little bit fatter, which is quite nice. Um, 
So now we get to the noise section of the oscillator bank. So we ha basically have a switch that lets us switch between white noise and pink noise. Um, this is how the noise sounds. White noise is pink noise sounds like this. So I'm gonna maybe use a tiny bit of white noise in there and turn it down really low. I like to turn it just enough that the light turns on, but um, then it's not too loud. Just adds a little bit of thickness to the, to the saw wave. So that sounds pretty good. A thing to keep in mind about Nanook is that every single p parameter is MIDI CC trainable. So I can parent uh, any parameter on this thing to any of the knobs on my MIDI keyboard. It's super great for mapping so that you can use this almost as like a real synth if you have a controller that has knobs and stuff. So next, let's move over to the filter, um, which is a trademark of Moog synths. So yeah, it's got the standard ladder sort of sounding uh, frequency cutoff. It's got an emphasis, which is basically resonance and amount of contour. So that is the amount of influence it takes from the loudness contour, which we'll get to later. But for now, let's just uh, see how the cutoff frequency sounds. So this is just basically a, a straight up low pass filter. So yeah, um, it gives a very nice sound and it's a good, uh, good low pass actually. We then have the resonance. So if I turn the cutoff down a little bit, like to halfway, and then I turn our emphasis up, then you can really hear the overtone much louder. Which that's like a classic Moog sound right there. So let's turn the emphasis up a little bit. And our cutoff frequency to about there. Um, I'm not going to set the cutoff frequency too particularly right now because I'm going to have a change with the loudness envelope anyway, but uh, for now Sounding pretty good as I said the amount of contour is the amount of influence it has from the loudness contour Okay, so let's go over the loudness contour and see how it works So the loudness contour and modifiers panel is basically just a uh, Attack envelope and so it's got attack sustain and decay. It doesn't have a release So let's change our attack time and see what it does so as you can hear, it builds up first and takes a little while before it uh, attacks. I'm gonna keep it pretty low, like about there. Then sustain, um, as you know, with ADSR, sustain is the main part of the note when I hold down the key, so. It starts off a little louder. If I turn sustain down, then it's gonna start off really loud and go down to a slightly lower, a lower volume. So decay is basically the fall off in volume that comes before the sustain level of volume. So let's uh, turn that up. So now we hear it goes attack, a little bit of decay, and then sustains at a lower, at a lower volume. So, and then if we turn decay on, it basically turns decay into a release uh, as well, like that. So if I lift the key off before decay is uh, complete, then it uh, will use the decay as a release basically. So. That makes a nice pluck sound, but I'm not looking for that right now. I actually want a bit of a decay and then a higher sustain level. So for our lead synth, that will sound pretty good. Now let's give it a listen to what happens when I turn up the amount of contour on our filter panel. The envelope that we have for attack, so like this down and then sustain is now going to apply to the cutoff filter as well. So. If we turn sustain down, you can really hear it a bit more. So it'll start out uh, released and then it will close off. There we go. You can hear it closing uh, as the filter uh, goes on in time. So this is probably one of the only uh, drawbacks of Nanook is that the loudness envelope and the cutoff envelope are linked. Okay, so now I have a little bit of a uh, key pluck sort of vibe in the beginning of my sound. But you can hear it's being hit. Um, and there's a little bit of a fall off when I release the key. Okay, so now let's move over to the control panel and see what that does. Um, this is settings that I don't use as much, but it basically is the glide speed. So if we have mono mode on, um, this is the portamento speed. So if I turn that up, then it, it takes forever to slide up. And if I turn it all the way down, 
it's very very uh, quick so I actually I'm gonna leave mono mode on and I'm gonna have a bit of a glide so just about that much glide. Now there's mod rate, which I almost never use because of how sensitive the mod wheel is, which I mentioned earlier in the video, um, which basically just is the speed of the LFO that controls the pitch. Um, so if I turn my modulation up just a tiny bit, you can already hear it's quite extreme. Now that is literally that much um, of the mod wheel turned up, but um, if you give it a listen with the mod rate turned a little bit higher, that is now very fast and like that. That's very slow, which could be useful for certain types of sounds. So I'm gonna leave the mod right in the middle. Sweep level is basically like a pitch sweep that happens um, if you turn it up, then it's a pitch sweep that uh, will basically affect the pitch of your note when you first hit the key. So if I turn it up, you can hear it's coming up from the bottom very quickly. If I turn it all the way up, then it's much uh, much slower and much more extreme which it can work for like a pluck um, but I'm not going to be using it but um, yeah that's basically what the pitch sweep does um, and then there's a switch to make the pitch sweep come from a lower pitch or a higher pitch so that is from uh, the top sliding down this is from the bottom sliding up so yeah, I'm gonna turn that all the way down and leave it off. Okay, uh, so second from the last thing we are discussing is now the output panel. So the output panel is basically just volume and mono. It's really simple. The original Mini Moog Model Ds were all monophonic. Um, there's some clones uh, that have been made recently that you can wire in series and you can do it polyphonic, but basically if you wanna be really authentic, you use mono. But if you wanna do chords and pads, you're definitely gonna to wanna to turn that off. But I want it on right now because I'm making a lead. So yeah, that's pretty uh, pretty simple. Now last, but definitely not least, is some inbuilt effects. So I normally don't like inbuilt effects at all on a synth. I normally leave them off and I do, do not use them. I put in my own effects that I can change more particularly later on. But in the case of Nanook, I actually really like the effects that are built in. So basically we have a flanger and a chorus and a delay. We have a few settings on all of these, but it's uh, not very much. Um, so this first panel over here controls the strength of uh, the send. So that is the audio signal that goes to the effects. I'm gonna leave it at half on both of them and then I can demonstrate what each of these effects do. Flanger is uh, now on. If you click the bypass button, it will turn the effect on. It's basically like an effects pedal. The mod rate is uh, obviously the rate that it modulates the, the extra bit of flange. I'm not exactly clued up on how the flanger works. Basically the mod rate is the speed, the depth is how extreme it is, and then this to delay is how much of it is sent to the delay effect. So in a chain, it would be a uh, flanger first and then the chorus and delay. So this is now with it really deep in both of my ears um, with the mod rate pretty fast. So let me turn the mod rate down. Now it's like uh, sailing into both ears. I'm gonna turn the depth down, but this adds a very nice stereo effect. And that sounds pretty good. Okay, so now we are going to have a look at the delay uh, section. So if we turn off this bypass, we see there are three knobs, uh, the mod knob, the depth knob, and the feedback knob. So what these do is basically uh, control the echo effect. The name is a little bit deceiving. It says delay chorus, um, which basically just means that if you turn the delay fast enough, it sounds like a chorus because a chorus is basically just a sound played twice or more times right after another to give it a out of phase, uh, out of tune chorus sound. Sometimes it is detuned, but it's sort of a fake chorus that you could use if you really want that effect. But the flanger does a pretty good job of uh, a chorus anyway. So a mod is the speed of which uh, that it sends the sound back at us. So if I press, the mod is how fast it takes before our signal gets back at us. So uh, if the mod is very low, it's super fast, it sounds like a chorus. If the mod is very high up, then it's very long and it takes a little while before it echoes back our sound. Um, the depth is the volume of the first repeat that is hitting back at us. So if I turn the mod up a little bit to about halfway and I hit the key, it does nothing. That is because the depth is all the way down. If I turn the depth up, that first repeat of the sound that comes back to me 
is also uh, a little bit louder. So then we actually hear that uh, delay coming back at us. So there we go. It's uh, in our ears. Okay, so that is what the depth does. The, the feedback basically controls how much of the delay is fed back into the delay effect again to continue the echo. So if we turn the feedback up a little bit, it will sound like this. So yeah, because there's uh, multiple of that exact delay effect being fed right back into that delay effect and round and round and round, um, slowly going down in volume until there's nothing. So I'm basically going to tweak these until I'm happy. I shouldn't have to explain how a delay effect works. Uh, you can look that up on YouTube um, or maybe ask me to make a video about it or something. Uh, that is our synth finished. Um, I think it sounds really cool. So it's basically just a... It's a very moody sound. You can find the sound on the pack that's gonna be on my Gumroad website place. Let's uh, do a demonstration of some Nanug made music. <laughs> 